Of course, I call myself uh, the, the live bard. Uh, I do recitations from the works of dead poets, so these are, I bring my dead poets with me. Um, poetry starts to change uh, in the early years of the 20th century. There are some, of course, this is narrative verse we're doing. I mean, this is not. Uh, Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry, not try, uh, William Blake. Uh, that, that kind of poetry. But there are some storytellers going uh, into the 20th century. One of them is Theodore Rothke, who in 1948 wrote My Papa's Waltz. <laughs> There's always a ringer in the crowd. The whiskey on your breath could make a small boy dizzy, but I held on like breath, death, but such waltzing was not easy. We romped until the pan slid from the kitchen shelf. My mother's countenance could not unfrown itself. The hand that held my wrist was battered on one knuckle. At every step you missed, my right ear scraped the buckle. You beat time on my head with a palm caked hard by dirt then waltzed me off to bed, still clinging to your shirt. Theodore Rothke, my pop as well. A poem that could not be written in this day and age because, of course, that would be child abuse. You know, we wouldn't have fun with that. So. And, 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 of course, which misses the point that this, I mean, it's, to me it's screamingly obvious that this, that this person, this writer, this young man, boy, now a man, loves his father and the image that he came. And, but um, a momentous day uh, occurred in April of 1913 when an author wrote in Poetry Magazine a very short poem. It was called In a Station of the Metro. And the writer was Ezra Pound. And in a few short years, he became the, uh, the apotheosis of what a new poet should be. The, the, the poem is, is very short, and I will read it to you. The apparition of these faces in the crowd, petals on a wet black bow. Did, did you feel the floor shake? No, you didn't? Because from that point on, that's the, that's the style, and the, the, uh, the, the, the trick is everybody's eyeing you enviously. Um, <laughs> depend on the Kennedy clan. No, enjoy. I told them, to, I, we, we had this discussion in, in, the, in the past. I said, bring the food in. They've been out having a hard time doing maneuvers all day. So, yeah, well, yes, landing, beach landings, yes. Uh, under, under, under hostile circumstances, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, anyway, Ezra Pound uh, wants, wants no rhetoric. So the, 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 the poem I did in the workhouse is absolutely out of the question. You can't send a message. It's just utterly wrong. And uh, he wanted it uh, cleaner or neater to the bone, closer to the bone. He wanted minimal words with a, with a poem. And of course, the metaphor, the picture becomes everything. And so, well, I was, people keep asking me, what are you going to do? And I, you know, two days ago, I think, well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here for the, you know, I've got to figure out something. And, and I happened to come across the uh, June 22nd, 19, uh, 2017 uh, issue of um, the New York Review of Books. And in it is this poem by Rosanna Warren called So Forth. And I have to, I, I'm sorry, this is not my style, but I have to read this to you. Um, do, what, was the, uh, what was the game show that you, when you ask or answered a question that was wrong, and it'd go, eh? All of them. What, what is it? All of them. Oh, well, it shows how much television I watch. I, I watch. So I'm, I'm, I am going to be the, the, the buzzer for this because you, uh, I want you to see this. And it's, all right. 
Here we go. Now, th this is this is important stuff. You know? So forth. I rise from our tousled bed and adopt my distance and find something friendly in the shack collapsing season by season down the road at the edge of the grove of birch and beech. That's okay. That, that's just a nice little image. Okay. Ah. Now, the floor buckles. Clappards sag. Wires hip hang askew like muscles in a bungled autopsy. Meh. Lemon yellow wall skin blisters into robin egg, robin's egg blue. Meh. The sun lays down an ultimatum through broken panes. Eh. Sheaf by sheaf of brilliant illegible prose. Eh. Your theorems will oxidize. Eh. My lines will crumble to mulch. Eh. <sighs> Last stanza. Whoever lived here is shoved off into another atmosphere, and we too are simply passing through, though the sky is trapped for now in a window frame. Eh. Cerulean miniature with a one fish spine tree. Eh. While the sol solstice grinds its teeth, eh. yawns and stretches, eh. crawling from its den. Eh. That's 11 metaphors. It's like a Jackson Pollock painting. You know, <laughs> slap the crap on there. 